Hey guys, Chris here. What does a solo hiker in the rainforest of Washington have in common with a firefighter in Utah? They both have a strange, bizarre discovery while alone. That's next. All right, you guys, I am in the Sierra Nevada foothills. I'm in a ravine and there's a little bit of wind above me and the ground below me is so filled with pine needle duff. It's like really thick. The legs of my chair went in and the back ones went like this, sunk this much. I almost went over backwards just moments ago. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't take my beer and throw it over my shoulder. Today we have an Einstock Arctic Pale Ale. This has a Viking on it and this is an Iceland beer. Pretty crazy. And this is a triple hopped for flavor and balance Arctic Pale Ale. It just sounds tasty. 5.6 ABV. I have not tasted this yet and whoa. Here we go. <laughs> little sudgy, little, little bit of a rough hike getting in here. Wow, that is definitely a pale ale. Here's what it looks like. Nice and golden. It's got a little bit of an aftertaste, but very smooth. It says it's just a light bitterness to it. Uh, Arctic pale ale, wow. Triple hop, so yeah, it's very hoppy. Einstock Brewing, and this is actually brewed out of Stratford, Connecticut. So there you go, I am a Vikings fan. We got the little Viking logo on the shirt here as well, so. <laughs> yeah, we got a Viking today, so. All right, cheers. So we have two stories today, as I indicated at the beginning. And the first one takes place in the great state of Washington in the Olympic National Park. Just an amazing national park consisting of rugged coastline working its way into the whole River Valley rainforest and then going on up to Alpine country topping out at Mount Washington with wilderness all around that 933,000 acres of just wild land on the Olympic Peninsula of Washington. This rainforest consists of Douglas fir, western hemlock, Sitka spruce, and red cedar trees. And many of these trees are just covered in thick moss because of all the rain they get. They get over a hundred plus inches of rain a year there. Just amazing. This is where Danielle used to like to go hiking in 2003 when she lived in Washington. She would go to the Olympic National Park, park at the trailhead for the whole River Valley rainforest and hike in. She would go during the week when there was less people and she hardly saw anybody when she went. This particular day, she's going down the trail, enjoying the scenery, it hadn't been raining the sun was coming through the trees it was still dark in there and even when it's sunny there's still water dripping off of the mossy trees and the branches pretty incredible it's almost like a secondary rain she's going down the trail working through this amazing wonderland of this forest with all the ferns and the moss and the giant trees and she hears something just off the trail and it catches her attention. It's really quiet in this forest because of such a blanket of moss and other foliage on the ground. But if you pay attention, you can hear things. You can hear animals, you can hear squirrels in the trees, but you really gotta be paying attention. She didn't see anything, so she continued on this trail. Didn't go very far, another 15, 20 feet, kinda rounded this bend, and then she saw something fall off of a tree trunk in front of her, a little bit to the right of the trail. And it looked like bark. She stepped off the trail and went into this brush 
and it kind of concealed her and she wanted to stay concealed so she went further into this brush but she could still see this tree trunk and she worked around and she now she could see the full tree trunk the base of it and she saw at the base of this tree look like broken bark from the tree and some moss like it had been broken off the tree and it's laying at the base of this tree then another piece fell from this tree this red cedar tree it was about three feet wide three feet around and she looked up into the tree and about 45 feet up in this tree she saw what she thought was a bear clinging to this tree it had one leg wrapped around like this the other one was up above its head and then both of the legs below were clinging to this tree with the tree pinched in between and she looked at it and it didn't make any sense and she saw this can't be a bear and she saw it look like arms and she observed it more carefully she could just see the back of it this kind of a small pointy head large broad shoulders and this hand was reaching up above it on this branch and there was it looked like possibly a nest that it was reaching its hand into and she could see a hand and she knew it wasn't a bear it had to be a bigfoot or a sasquatch and her heart started beating and she's concealed in this thick brush looking up at this thing and she observes it reaching into this nest and pulling something out and all she can see is the back of its head and it puts its hand in front of its face and she assumed it was eating a bird or possibly an egg or eggs she watches for a few minutes this Sasquatch it was covering the width of the tree broad shoulders reddish auburn hair very muscular had to be six or seven feet tall it was kind of hard to tell from the angle she's looking up at it and this thing suddenly started coming down the tree and she's observing it and it took its hands and it was like this and it went like that and that and it started sliding down and then the legs were on the wrapped around the tree like this and it almost like it was crawling but going backwards like this coming down the tree trunk pretty rapidly very efficiently it looked really smooth in how it was doing this and she realized in just a few moments this thing was going to be ground level with her so she crouched down to hide herself even more and she couldn't see anything at this point and she just sat there and listened she could hear it land on the ground and then start walking and as she's listening it stopped and her heart's beating fast at this point and she's thinking did this thing notice her did it sense her she didn't think it could see her and she's waiting and waiting and it just felt like forever and then she heard it breathing this deep low breathing it wasn't real loud but she could hear it and she's waiting and just kind of clenched up like this can't see a thing she's just hearing all this and then it starts walking again and it fades out and she could hear it going into the forest and it just gets quiet again and she sat there let out a breath because she was holding it all in her heart's still beating really fast and then she slowly got up after about two minutes looked around and didn't see anything and she quickly turned to her left and went back onto the trail and headed back to her car she got home and she didn't tell anybody for a couple of weeks and then she told two close friends of hers what had happened and they both believed her and they're from Washington and you guys get a lot of sightings up in Washington you guys know what I'm talking about between the people that live in Seattle Tacoma throughout the state of Washington there's a lot of sightings in your state and so her friends believed her and one of them even said she had found some footprints along this creek in the Olympic National Park tiny little footprints but really deep in this mud along this creek 
And she thought about it and she didn't feel a lot of fear as she was observing this. She felt awe and almost privileged to see this thing. But once this thing was coming down the tree and it was at ground level with her, she started to feel this fear. And she also realized that all the hikes she had done in this park, that after seeing this Sasquatch up in a tree, she realized that she could have been hiking many times and been observed by Bigfoot or Sasquatch from the trees or even at ground level because it's so thick in there and there's so much vegetation and moss and with all the rain and she thought these things could be watching her and she had no idea. And that is our story from Danielle in Washington, 2003. So this next story is really chilling and bizarre. This took place in 2007 where Janice was living in Southern Oregon in a small community there. And she was a member of the elite firefighting crew called the Hot Shots. And the Hot Shots were the best of the best. They were in top condition, they were fearless, and they would go where it was most dangerous to help direct and divert these fires and whatever they do out there to keep us safe in the national forest. Really, hats off to them, thank you. And they were expected to go pretty much anywhere, at least out west. And so in 2007, there was a very large fire in southern Utah. It was considered the largest fire in Utah history at the time. 363,000 acres burned. Mostly rangeland fire, but there was some forest. And this took place predominantly along I-15, which runs north and south from Salt Lake City down to St. George, and then it continues on to Southern California, and I-70, which comes in from the east like this. Right at this junction, this is where Janice and her hotshot crew went and they met up with another crew and they made, made a spike camp at this location. Now this fire was called the Milford Flat Fire. I looked it up. Just an incredible fire, rangeland, forest, and it was converging on this intersection, I-15 and I-70. And so they had to close the highway down. One of the firefighters said this was the fastest moving fire they'd ever seen. In fact, at this intersection, there's a gas station, a Chevron gas station at this place called Cove Fort. And the owner was in his gas station and they saw this wall of fire coming right for the gas station and they fled for them their lives him and some employees and some customers even. This is what they had to say. I saw this in an article. Jimmy Hodges, owner of Cove Fort Chevron, nearly lost his entire gas station Saturday afternoon. His sons who were at the station at the time said they saw a wall of fire coming across the interstate and evacuated customers and fled themselves as the flames moved towards the business. And apparently what happened was because of the high winds, it moves up and down and it creates this almost a mosaic pattern because the winds are so strong. And the fire like jumped over his gas station, burned some buildings around it, and he saved, the gas station was saved. Just incredible. So this is where they were working, Janice and her crew, and they were creating backfires. The freeway was closed, I-70 and 15 was closed, and they were in their work trucks heading eastbound on 70 in the wrong lane. She said it felt really strange heading down the freeway with no traffic on it going in the wrong lane. They were obviously going in the right direction. And they would go to a location and they would make backfires to get rid of the, some of the fuel and then when the fire came in, they didn't have as much to work with. And so this is what she was doing. Her crew was spread out around the freeway, both lanes, and they were to her east. She was the farthest person west starting these backfires. And they were spread out pretty good. And she's working away and there was really thick smoke 
really hard to see what was going on. Really a surreal scene. She took a break. She sat down in this guardrail and she's sitting there drinking some water. And she looks up and in the smoke she sees what appeared to be some people in a line walking out of the smoke. Kind of towards her, but then they were paralleling the other lane on the other side of the freeway. And she thought to herself, what in the heck are these people doing out here? And she's watching these people, observing them, and they're walking in this line, and out of the smoke she saw seven. Seven people is what she thought at first. And something didn't look right. They had these very long arms walking very slowly through the smoke and emerging and getting clear in focus, not 50 feet from her on the other lane. And she's going, this is really strange. And they were really large. Six, seven, eight feet tall, there were seven of them. Behind them were four smaller ones three, four, five feet tall, varying heights, walking slowly as well, covered completely in hair, and then there was, at the end, this very large one, big broad shoulders, looked like it was carrying a small one, and she thought, are these bears? What the heck is this? And she's staring at this, and she's seeing them walking in this group and then they get to this guardrail, step over it like it was nothing. Very tall guardrail, just like the one she was sitting on, but in the opposite side. And they went off the freeway, down into the ditch, and disappeared into the smoke and into the trees. And she thought about it just for a moment. And then she had this very chilling feeling come over her, and she almost threw up. She realized she saw this family or clan of Bigfoot escaping the fire. They'd seen wildlife before, deer, coyotes, other animals trying to get away from a fire. And she saw these strange giant beings emerging from the smoke and disappear back into the, the, the swirling smoke. Just crazy. And she just had this disoriented feeling come over her and she's surrounded by smoke and she knows her work crews to the east of her and then they finally caught up to her and she didn't say a word to anybody she didn't know what to say after seeing this months later she finally told a few people and in her case she was ridiculed she was mocked for, for her story, and so she decided, she had this attitude about it, she's not going to talk about this to anyone anymore, because she's just going to be not believed. Years later, she found online stories that other people had had about Sasquatch and Bigfoot, and she could relate to that, and she could share her own story. And I've talked to a park ranger before in the past, and I hope to talk to him again, but as he was talking to me and telling me some things that had happened, he was getting some pushback from his management in the park that he was working in about talking about this. And so he decided he didn't want to talk anymore about what he had experienced in his park. And so this is kind of what people that work for the national forests, the national parks, tend to experience from what little I know. But if they start talking about what they've seen out in the wilderness, out in the wild, if it relates to something strange and bizarre and out of the ordinary or extraordinary like Bigfoot and Sasquatch. And so this is what happened to Janice. And like I said, she was ridiculed for talking about it. And I don't know if this was the crew members that were giving her a hard time or whoever this was, but she decided it was not in her best interest to even talk about this anymore. 
until years and years later. But she always remembered that bizarre feeling of seeing this line of Sasquatch come out of the smoke and like ghost figures and then disappear back into the smoke and we're gone. And that is her story about the hot shots in Utah. <sighs> All right, you guys, thank you for watching. I'm gonna do a nice little hike out of here. And I really appreciate you guys, appreciate you for commenting. And uh, we will see you on the next one. As always, keep hiking. I love these giant pine cones. Look at that. <laughs> That's huge. You can throw it like a football. <laughs> all right, you guys. We are just about back at the truck here. A few more minutes, but all right, we'll see you next time. Keep hiking.